Hi, it's Jamie and I'm back to show you another project um, that you can do from home if you don't have access to your play studio with some simple things. Um, in my last video, I talked about setting up the work surface and using certain tools. So you can refer to that one um, to see how I got to this setup here. Um, then the next thing, so for this project, um, we're gonna do a mug and I usually use a pattern and I have a really si simple, cheap pattern for you to use. This is half slice of a normal newspaper. So I just um, took the half of the page and then I folded it into fourths. And then now I'm just going to lay it on top of my um, clay here and I'm gonna cut it using the knife. Once again, I'm gonna take these little bits of clay and I'm just gonna give them a little spray. You don't, If you don't have a spray bottle, you can use just a little bit of water or something and just put it back into the bag. So now I have the starting of my mug and I'm just gonna remove this clay over to another area for later use. So when I decorate this um, mug, um, one of the things that I'm gonna do is um, get some things from nature that you can find outside. I happen to have a piece of driftwood or a stick. Um, this is like a pine um, needle thing that when you roll it, it makes a kind of interesting texture. Um, this one I thought more about just doing impressions and going along and creating ridges like that. Um, what's nice with clay is you can erase. <laughs> so the thing about clay is every time you press into it, it's going to distort and change around. So um, you have maybe a couple times to explore on the surface that you've created, but uh, don't go too far beyond that. Um, so I'm going to, I'm really taken with this texture here. So I'm going to see what I can do with this. So I'm going to just roll that in. Ooh, I like it. That's, that's got a really interesting texture. So one thing you may notice is I'm not going to the very tippy top here. And the reason for that is that this is the area where my lips are going to be. So I don't want my lips to get, um, to hit anything rough. Um, the other thing is I might just try to taper it with my finger a little bit to make it a little bit thinner. Just so that it's, it's nicer on contact. So all this pressure uh, has made me perhaps stick to the board here. So I just picked it up to release that pressure. Now what I'm going to do is stick my template back on. And if you notice, look how much it's grown. So all that pressing has made the template go bigger. So I'm putting this on and I'm going to cut again. Um, what you can also do um, is you could bring your ruler back down and use that as an edge to press up against to make it a little bit easier. So one of the ways to join this um, now is we want to join this end with this end and you can create a bevel to do that. Um, and if you don't have the regular pottery tools, uh, we do have, there's something called a bevel square, you know, wire that you can run to do that. Um, or if you have a little roller, you can use a roller to make that. I'm just going to use my fingers since we're acting as if we're working at home with hardly any tools. So I made a bevel there. And then I'm going to use my little comb. So if you don't have a comb, you can use an old toothbrush. And then I'm flipping it over. And then on the same side, I'm going to create that bevel again, or in the, well, this side, which is the other side. So you don't want the bevel showing on both sides. Just on one side, the opposite. All right, so to help me with this clay, it's a little floppy right now. So I could wait for it to firm up a little bit before doing the next step. Um, or to help me out, I can wrap it around something round. So in this case, I'm going to wrap it around this bottle here and I'm going to tape it to give me some help. And when you tape it, do not go like this. You want to be able to lift your piece out. So you're just going to tape it to itself. So now I'm going to pick up my piece. I forget which side was the top. That side was the top. And then, so you can bring it over on anything here. This one actually 
to measure this beforehand is a little bit too big. So I'm going to take this out and I'm going to use this one. What's important here is that it doesn't have to be an exact fit. You just need a surface on which you can use to join these two together. Now, normally um, when we're doing hand building, you want to use um, some slip. Um, you can also use a little bit of water. This is really fresh clay, so you could even probably even get away with no water and just joining it together. So I'm just going to overlap it a little bit. I'm going to push this back up against it. And I'm going to take my texture and put it back against it too to make it blend in. So now I can take this out and I can take out my template. And now this is standing on its own. It's still very soft. So on the next thing that I'm going to do is uh, just let it set up for a little bit and prepare the other things that I'm going to add to it. So what else am I going to add to it? I'm going to add a handle and I'm also going to add a bottom. That little bit I'm going to use for the handle and then I'm going to use the bottom over here. Now to understand how much I'm going to need, I'm going to gently bring this up, put it down, and trace around it. All right, stopping the video because I hear a unique bird sound. Okay, that was pretty spectacular. That was a golden eagle, not a golden eagle, bald eagle. So that was so cool. <laughs> Um, anyway, I didn't, it flew away before I could get the camera and take a picture. It'll be interesting to see if the sound comes back, um, you know, when I do the edits on this, I'll keep it in if so. All right. So there's my circle. Um, and that's going to become the bottom of my pot here. So I'm just going to, um, Put that over, cut it out and put it around, put it over there. And this is still a good size piece of clay here. So I might be able to do something with this um, later. So I'm going to cut my scrap off and save this, put it aside again. And now I'm gonna work on my handles. So to get a handle, the, my preferred method is just to cut a strip about six inches long, about five eighths wide, and then a quarter inch strip. So I'm going to do this just to get a straight edge. I'm going to eyeball about five eighths. And I'm going to measure here too. Oh, this is a little short. This is not six inches, so I need to get a bigger piece. All right, now I'm going to cut the quarter inch strip. And um, as I was saying earlier, this is really wet clay. So using slip to join is really not necessary when it's this super wet. So I'm going to just let the pressure of the clay of my tool um, make the join here. Um, one of the things too, which I haven't shown or said that you could use is a little piece of sponge. I don't, I mean, you have sponges around your house. You could just get a little piece of one. This is a clay studio sponge. Um, but I'm, what I'm doing is I'm tapering the edges here and I'm tapering with my finger, the edges below. Um, at some point, what I should have done before I put the strip on is just gone and done this as well. So the thing is when you, if you have a sharp edge now, it's going to be even sharper after the firing. So you just want to make sure you soften those really hard points. All right, so now I have this strip on here and I'm just going to take this and just, this is such a cool texture. <laughs> I'm really enjoying it. So that's my handle. And now I need to get it into the shape that will go onto my mug. 
So think of it as a uh, half of a heart shape or the letter C. And I'm just going to put it in that shape to get it comfortable starting to be in that position. Uh, I'm going to cut it at an angle here. So don't cut too much off of it because you're going to be at some point putting it on and figuring out how much needs to come off. I've just done this so many times. I kind of am eyeballing it. So I know that's kind of what I want to do, but I'll get my, I'll refine it later. So now I'm ready to put on the bottom. And um, this is where you're going to want to have some joinery. And um, I'm going to just double check the roundness of it and maybe do some refinement. So one of the things that I have about my studio are molds. And I use molds all the time for, like I would probably just plop this on here and make it all smooth. You know, make sure that it looks round. But I don't, I don't have the luxury of that if I'm at home without my normal tools. And so um, you could find a children's ball if you have children in the house. I'm sure there's a ball about. And you could use this to just gently go on top. So you want a piece of plastic because it's going to stick to that plastic. And you could just use that to help it be in round. Another thing you could use is um, a funnel. So I have this funnel from the dollar store. So if you have a funnel set, you could do that as well. So you can just put it on there and just make sure that it looks like it's going to round. All right. Then once you have it, you can put it back down. And I can see that that looks pretty good. So I'm not concerned right now. What I will do is it's a little bit of a tight, um, I mean, it matches it exactly almost. So I want to actually push it out a teeny bit more. And the reason for that is I want to create a lip on the bottom. Now, remember when you're doing this to use the right side, we intentionally made the top a little bit smaller just for when our lips are up against it. So now to put it on, I'm going to flip this over. And don't worry if it goes out of center, you're going to put it back. I'm going to do my little bit of scoring. I'm going to do my little spray. All right, so now what I, I, what I did is I just gently went down like this to make sure that it was on there. This is hanging out way too much here, so I'm just going to cut off a little bit of it. So I, I want like... I don't know, an eighth of an inch showing. It could be more. I'm, I'm just being a little picky. And this is where I want to make sure that it's going to be on the bottom um, secure and no leaking. So I'm going to just do a little bit of wooden spoon. And as I'm doing it, I'm going to start pounding it this way. So this ensures the, the adhesion of the clay bodies together. And while you have it upside down, it's a good idea to take a pencil and write your name in it. That's my signature. Now I'm going to flip it over. I can use my finger with some water to kind of smooth that edge. Now I can see over here that it kind of went in a little bit. So I'm going to use this to push out again. And then smooth. This is super reminiscent of a Jeremy Wallace piece. So he's an artist that you can look up that does slab built pieces by tearing things. Really cool guy to check out. Gosh, I'm really happy with this now. So this could be, I could leave this alone and I could be done. Um, but I said I was going to make a mug. So I'm going to put the handle on. Um, the other thing I could do is use the other end of this stick to go around the bottom. And just run it around there to close out that seam. Now you could also, if you wanted to, take a little bit of your clay, roll it into a little coil. like this 
and you could I like to make it into a circle maybe a little bit bigger than this you know to kind of match this and then you have that you drop it in and then you use the end of the spoon to push it in but I this clay is wet and I did a good amount of tapping on the bottom so I'm pretty confident that I have got it put together um, the other things that I'm going to do now is attach the handle. So I'm going to attach the handle at the place where I joined it right here. So I'm going to look at that. Uh, it's still a little big. Uh, it feels a little wet. Let me do some more manipulations to this while I'm waiting for it to set up some more. Um, I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to go around the top. You don't want to use your sponge to do this. The thing is, this, this clay has grog in it, and when you use the sponge, it's going to make this rough. So you want to use your finger, because you want to press down the grog, and just go around it gently. Now, another thing, too, is um, while I'm waiting for this to set up, it's I could do some more shaping. Let's say I wanted to belly this out a little bit. So one of the things I could do is use this curvature of the spoon start pushing out. Now I'm giving the piece more volume. Now when you're pushing against the seam be sure to have some support on the other side. You don't want to tear open your seam. All right I think I'm happy with that. So now I'm just going to put this on here and see if that looks to me that still looks a little big. So I'm going to take off some more. And where I'm attaching it is on the shoulder of the pot. So when I stack this upside down, I don't want this to be sitting up because then it won't sit well on the shelf. So that's my personal preference, but you can do what you like. That's where it's going to go. I'm going to mark it with my knife. Once again, if you don't have a scoring tool, you just use your end of your knife. Now I've added it on and notice I'm wiggling it back and forth. I want to make sure that it's really on there to be able to withstand a little bit of wiggling. So one of the things that just happened is that this here is um, pulling a little bit because of the weight of the handle. So that means I'm attaching it too soon, basically. So what I can do is instead of backing away is I can just ensure that I dry it on a round surface. So normally I would put it on a mug, but since I'm emulating doing something at home. I'm going to take the funnel or you could use the ball and put something around it so it won't stick. And then put it upside down. So what's nice about this is um, it allows me to look at the seams from another direction and um, the plastic when the clay shrinks, it's going to shrink in. It's going to go in. Um, it, the plastic will allow it to travel up. So if you don't have um, a funnel or you don't have a ball, you might get creative and use an orange or something. Something There's got to be something round in your house. Um, anyway, this right now is for all intents and purposes done. Um, if I had waited and added these things on later when they were more dry, then I would cover the whole thing with plastic just so that it would dry at a slower rate. But I've done this all within a half hour and um, it will be fine. So um, this part over here will dry a little bit faster. So if you have concerns about that, you could just take a little bit of plastic and put it over that portion of your piece. That's always a good safety uh, thing to do. And then just put it aside and go to your next project. All right, so more pictures after it's done. Um, these are my scraps from my um, last project. So what I'm doing now is I'm putting them all together and I'm doing something that's called wedging. So when you are um, done with your scraps, save them. I usually spritz them with water, put them back in the bag. And then at a later time, you can do what I'm doing here. It's like wedging dough and you're getting your scraps ready for another run. I'm 
here is my very last piece of the original slab that I started out with. And what I'm going to do is just make a little bowl to go on top of this, or to go on top of this. So I'm going to use this as my mold. And um, I already showed in an earlier video how to create the slab. And so now we're just using that original slab and going, seeing what we can do. So first of all, I need to get a um, circle template. I could either go freehand it or I could use a circle from something in my vicinity. Like this top here happens to be the perfect size for this. So I'm just going to put this down. So I'm going to go around it with my knife. One of the things that you can notice here is that I have really rough edges. So um, after you cut something, you want to smooth out those edges. To do that, I'm going to, you could either take a piece of fabric or you can take a piece of plastic. So I just happen to have plastic, but you're going to want to go around at a 45 degree angle, not, you know, not on top, but actually on the side, pushing down like you're tapering. I'm going to just use my fingers and my hands to gently push it down to make it conform to the ball. Don't worry if it's going off to the side, like right now it looks crooked because you you can always pick this up and reposition. So right now, your main goal is to get this to the shape of the ball that you're on. Important also to use plastic so it doesn't stick to the ball. And then once you have it down there, now you can start doing some fun stuff with it. So um, I can add texture again. I can add texture to the bottom of it, like um, to make it match my mug. Um, or I could leave B. Um, I could use my credit card to smooth it out and make it make sure I'm really compressing into the ball. The thing about clay is, is that it has memory and I'm giving it some new memories right now. I'm telling it you're round. You're going to stay round. All right, so that should be enough for my tiny little um, ball or bowl. Um, and the next thing I'm going to do is add a foot to it. So I'm going to do it while it's still wet. And one of the things that you could do here is just to ensure that it's the same height all the way around. So you're going to take a, a ruler or you're going to take, actually a ruler might be easier, and you're just going to look at it and I say, okay, got three and a half inches to the rim here. Ooh, this is four. So I know I need to come down over here. So I'm going to make an adjustment. All right. So now this is, it looks level all the way around with a ruler. And now I can put on a center. So this one, I'm just going to do a very simple foot. And to do that, I'm going to find I'll move this out of the way so you can see what I'm doing here. This is the slab I did earlier. I found a lid, a circle. So if you have cutters, you can just use cutters to do this. Uh, but I'm going to use the lid. And then um, I'm going to need to find a, fall, a smaller one. So I can look about me and see, do I have something that would be smaller? That would be nice. That's too close. So I'm not going to use that one. So I think what I'll do is I'll use this little dot thing and I'll just make, like you could use a soda can or something like that and just make an impression. So that's, that's good. So now I'm going to cut this. And looking at this, I can tell right now that it looks like it's going to be too thick. So I'm just going to flatten it out a little bit more. Um, if you wanted to, and if you had the, had the plastic to do it, you could just do this, push on here all the way, take it out, and now you have a nice little foot. So I'm going to come back with my little punch here, and I'm going to punch in. 
there's my donut. And now I'm just going to attach. When I attach it, the thing is, I want to make sure that it's even all the way around. So I'm just going to make sure that I have the same distance. From so I'm going to take this off so I can score the bottom. And it's helpful to have a registration mark. So I'm going to put a mark there. And I see that I missed this altogether. There. You can use your um, tooth, toothpick. You could use your uh, chopstick to kind of go around that seam to make sure that it's solid there. And I'm going to do that with this. I'm going to erase my registration marks. So another thing I'm going to do is that um, to ensure that this is going to rest without any kind of wobble, I'm just going to give it three points to rest on. So to do that, I need a triangle. So you can cut out a triangle. Let me print one out from the computer. I'm trying to find my triangle. Here it is. <laughs> After all that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, lay my triangle out. And I'm going to see where the points are. So I'm going to make little marks. So right there, right there, and right there. So I'm going to come back with my spoon here. And I'm just going to go in like this. OK, it's still not exciting enough for me. So I'm going to give it some texture on the side. All right, well, that's better. All right, and once you have it over, don't forget to put your signature on there. So this little beauty is just gonna hang out and it's gonna firm up and it's going to, because I didn't go all the way down, um, it'll just shrink up and in and it won't stick on this. Plus this is a ball, so um, there's no problem of this cracking. So when you're putting clay onto surfaces, if there's no give, um, if the pitch, if it's steep enough, it's going to crack the clay. So this should be okay. All right, so that's it for our little bowl. I'll show you the completed pieces later when they've set up a bit and uh, another little project for you to try at home. All right, take care. See you next time.